Well, I got it to that point. It was working. And I was like, okay, at least I didn't, like, break, break it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I... I <sighs> but it's still not to... booting up like I need it to boot up. So, uh, started that's, playing that's with it, nice. started filling with it. I'm like, okay, I've got access to the battery cable connector. Why don't I pull that out, drain off the capacitors for like two minutes, plug it back in, mess with it, mess with it. I started moving the whole thing around and suddenly it just started working. And I got it to boot all the way into the OS. I'm like, oh, quick, run <laughs> off to my car, grab my little micro USB yeah. flash drive, cram it in this thing and start copying data off while I have it alive. And yeah. I, I'm like, just select all, uh, copy, paste. That was it a mistake. Feel, feels like a, feels like you pulled off a heist. Mm-hmm. That's the problem, <laughs> though. That's the problem is, it was grabbing the cheap money first, <laughs> meaning the Android data folders, which don't amount to anything at all, but mm -hmm. are sure. like ninety percent of all the consumed storage. So. Mm -hmm. It gets through that point. I'm like, okay, it's draining off the battery pretty quick with all this heavy copy-paste action. Let me throw it on the wireless charger and turn off the screen. Put on the wireless charger, it starts charging. Still kind of draining down, not really the fastest charger. Then I hit mm -hmm. the power button. The p screen powers off. It's The flash drive is still flickering. Then suddenly the whole thing just goes black. I'm like, no, yeah. damn it. But now my thought is, okay, what is the what is the chance that it's actually a faulty power button? <laughs> because that looks extremely easy to replace. It's just like one little connector and you pull the thing off of, out from the edge. I'm like, okay. if it's just the power button being flaky and like clicking itself, that would make sense. And that would be really easy to even just... You're making this stuff sound fun. It actually like, is. Uh, it actually uh, is extremely fun. But at the same time, <laughs> it's like, oh, driving right. me nuts. Or it sounds like an investigation. Yeah. Like you're, you're learning. That, that, that's cool. I, I, t I tried to replace the uh, internal battery on a Game Boy Color cartridge once. And Ooh. I broke it. And that was... The last time I did <laughs> that. Wow. I love it. I have not gone that far on a Game Boy Color cartridge. Wait a second, did I? No. No, I tried once. I tried on my old um, Pokemon Red mm -hmm. cartridge that I bought off of eBay for yeah. like 20 cents. It was my, uh, my old um, uh, Pokemon Silver Okay. Uh, cartridge. Which I didn't really lose anything because, well, you know, once the once the internal battery went, it couldn't store save data, so that was already gone. I was just it was just a fun yeah. I don't know experiment. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, like NES cartridges are like known for being fun to break into and then attach computers to and reprogram as different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I thought I might um, went on a little bit uh, I don't know, more settled. Mm -hmm. uh, I might I might get uh, what do you call those things? The, 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 the cartridge where you can just put ROMs on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I thought I might get one of those for uh, for my Game Boy Color. Sure, especially when like abandonware sites are giving out ROM files for basically nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'd love to I'd love to do that on a uh, uh, on on a um, uh, Game Boy Advance, but mm. uh, the the, uh, the good Game Boy Advances are pretty expensive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the backlit ones. Mm. Um, what are they called? The DS or the 3DS? Uh, the no, the Game Boy Advance SP, I think, the ones that fold. Oh, it looks like a DS. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I've never actually played on an Advance before. My, uh, my first, my first game system ever was uh, was the uh, 
Game Boy Advance, not the folding one though. Oh, okay. uh, pretty backlight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think my, my my first video game that wasn't somewhat educational was uh, Pokemon Ruby. I think. Cool. So everything before that was was like uh, Magic School Bus. Um, <laughs> Yeah, on a little computer. Oh, I, I completely understand. Gizmos and gadgets, or something like that. Maybe yeah. speak in typing tutorials. Math, math Blaster. <laughs> oh, man. That takes me back. Man, Math Blaster sucks. <laughs> what a piece of shit. I mean, I had fun with it, but, like, I can't imagine it was. it would hold up coming back. Yeah, my two. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe it's. Uh, I don't know. Oh man, uh, scrolling through. Uh, quick start. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't know. I, it, it's. It, I feel like I've hit a little bit of a wall where, like, I don't know what I don't know. Uh. Hmm. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, like I, I'm not sure what to look at in the quick start. Rules. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Because uh, do you have the do uh, they do they have a GM guide like D and D does? They do. Okay. They do. Uh, I don't have that at the moment. Because you, you you can apparently you know, they say you could uh, run um, the haunting with just the quick start mm -hmm. uh, rules. Oh, okay. Let me let me do what I did last time. I'll just I'll just start going over stuff that I do now. Okay. Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, if I wanted to like attack your character with something, I'm trying to think, how would I do? How would I? How would I actually do that? I would uh. You don't, you don't really roll... Do you roll to hit in this game? That's what I don't know. Because it does... There is hit points. I have 11 hit points. Yeah, yeah. But I've also got 40 insanity points. Or 40 sanity points. Uh -huh. And it's like, which one do you hit from those? Right. Well, Cause it I sounds mean, it like depends. sanity is just about as valuable as hit points are. If you run out of sanity, right, yeah. you basically go to the loony bin for a couple months, and you're out of the party right. for a while. You you do have yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, you have a, obviously a lot more sanity than health, and mm -hmm. sanity is going to tick down, kind of no matter what. Right. Um, over time. Whereas health, I guess, ideally, it doesn't go down at all. Mm -hmm. um, and, is there a section in here about... Uh, I don't have the PDF I'm looking at. doesn't have bookmarks. Occupation and skills. I'm looking to see if there's a specific combat section. Fighting rules for close quarters combat. There we go. Every time you are attacked, you may choose to fight back. Uh, parentheses and attempt to avoid block or parry an attack while making one of your own, or dodge. Uh, hmm. Attempt to avoid the attack completely. Um, both attacker and defender. That's that's interesting because it, it seems like fighting back can it involve avoiding or blocking the attack mm. but that must be different somehow than dodging because they're making a point of separating the two right. uh, both attacker and defender roll percentage dice and air their level of success okay so oh, okay so when you fight someone it's a contested roll it seems like rather mm. than rolling against a flat uh, DC like D and D. Right, right. Uh -huh. 
if you are fighting back, use your fighting skill. You need to achieve a higher level of success than your attacker. If you are dodging, use your dodge skill. Your attacker needs to achieve a higher level of success than you. It's a simple matter. The winning side avoids receiving any damage and will inflict damage unless dodging on their opponent. So why would you dodge? That's now what I want to know. Maybe you can get put distance. Maybe you can like get out if you dodge. I mean, I would think it's like you duck or something like that. Um. And it gives a bunch of examples for like amounts of damage. They, they use a, they use a lot of not real dice in Call of Cthulhu. They use like D threes and D twos and stuff. Yeah. Right. So they're saying in this combat section that the okay. Oh yeah, this is page uh, fourteen. Ah, okay. I I went back to like twelve or whatever. Just to just to see that okay, initiative is based on dexterity. Oh shit! Yeah, I don't know how initiative works. It's it's basically dex scores in order of every, for, for okay. everybody. So it's like based on a roll or just your flat dex scores. Just flat dex scores according to this. Oh, all right. Minus sixteen. <laughs> However, the monsters stack up against that. Highest dex acts first, then others go in descending order. Duration of a round is long enough for everyone to take one significant action. Okay, see, I like that. I don't like the the, the D and D. It's like it is six seconds. You know, six seconds because I like you know uh, yeah. people have whole conversations and around. Yep. Knows no hard fast rules. Okay, cool. That is a funny way of them to say it. Like, around, how long is a round? As long as it is. Yep. Fight, dodge, and firearm. <coughs> Two of these skills make up multiple specializations. Fighting is brawling. Firearms is rifle, shotgun. In character creation, you decide what you can do. Okay. Oh, yeah, I have my window open. That's not... Oh, that's not a cat? Sounds like a cat. <laughs> nope, those are humans. Oh. Oh, I hear it now, yeah. You don't get to push combat rolls, you simply make another attack next round. Hmm. I don't yeah, so did we go over pushing a roll? I don't know what that means. So, I think this is kind of cool. Um, an example I was given for this would be... It doesn't always work this way, but... Oftentimes the initial roll doesn't have very high stakes. Mm. Um, you... Not always, but, but often. Let's say, you know, you, 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 you see a little ledge and it's like, I'm going to climb up there and you fail your roll. Mm -hmm. And you might have the opportunity there to say, like, oh, well, I guess I don't. Mm -hmm. If the DM says, like, it's, it seems like a very difficult climb, uh, you, you start going up, but, it, it, you know, it mm -hmm. becomes clear that you're not strong enough or whatever. Right. Uh, and then you can take that fail without serious consequences. Or you can push the roll and try really hard. Uh, and you basically get a second chance, but if you fail that, then you maybe fall. Interesting. Off the ledge. Interesting. Okay. I like it. Mm -hmm. Or you search an area, you don't find anything, uh, and you you decide to push the roll and can you know that that's just you like looking around, opening drawers, and then closing them again. Mm -hmm. But then if you push the roll, you're like, okay, let's tear this place apart. Uh, and if you fail the roll, maybe you're interrupted. Someone, you know, right. comes back to their room or whatever. Okay.
or it could be just as, as you know maybe maybe, maybe he, there's no added like external factor they're like falling off the ledge or someone interrupting you maybe just you pushed the roll and you failed now you've completely destroyed the room mm -hmm. uh and i guess that that's still a a consequence and you still haven't found what you're looking for right okay here's a question if you dodge using your dodge if you dodge using your dodge skill your attacker needs to achieve a higher level of success than you i did not choose dodge as a skill is that a problem uh, i don't know um, because it's i mean it's giving me a base percentage of half of your decks like it's just always half okay of your yeah. decks. right um, so wait, can you take dodge as like a skill to put your? Yeah, it's it's right between disguise oh. and drive auto. <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather drive okay. a car than I would dodge monsters. Right. Yeah. Uh, I guess that makes sense because you can you can pick like brawl as one of your skills, proficient skills or whatever they call it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if that is a problem, because, you know, I would almost combat is a little central right. in this game. You can stay out of trouble by succeeding on your drive roll. Well, by Probably the, as likely yeah. as you. Yeah, well, by the look of it, you... dodging almost seems like you're going to stay in combat. You might as well just keep avoiding the guy. Or whatever. Duck and <laughs> twist out of the way and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that would be my assumption of what dodge means. Whereas, like, <coughs> retreat and run away is something else. Maybe. I, I'm just confused by, like, it. It seems to suggest that fighting back can include like avoiding attempting to avoid damage mm -hmm. but the, but then what why would you dodge instead of I don't know I don't know I don't, maybe that maybe I'm misunderstanding maybe dodging is the only way to Okay, well, let me look at fighting maneuvers. Maybe that will answer. So, uh, if a player describes a goal that is something other than simply inflicting physical harm, then it can be resolved with a fighting maneuver. A successful maneuver allows the character to achieve one thing, such as disarm an opponent, knock an opponent to the floor, seize and hold an opponent whereupon the opponent must apply one penalty die to their actions uh, until they break free. Uh, maneuver is treated in the same way as a regular fighting attack uh, using the brawl skill. The opponent may dodge or fight back as usual. Compare the build of the two. Okay, so another contested role, but like, yeah, okay. So if you try to seize someone and they fight back, attempting to do damage, mm -hmm. that, that's an interesting one where if you succeed, you seize them. If they succeed, they damage you. Huh. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And I keep having mental visuals of, like, standard <laughs> 1920s Chicago mob gang, gangster stuff. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, you're going to get into a nice little street brawl. Mm -hmm. Maybe try to pull a knife or a gun if you can, but otherwise just keep swinging until somebody goes down. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. 
disadvantage is weird, I guess. Oh, I meant to watch that. I meant to go back and find out what was up with penalty, you know, bonus and penalty die versus mm. uh, difficulty right. of a roll. Maybe I'll maybe I'll set up uh, row twenty a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't necessarily need to use row twenty for this, but wait, just to start. All right, because I'm somewhat familiar with it. I can invite you and Sean right. to make a character sheet. The character sheets. I don't know if they're good. Yeah, uh, in row twenty, that's but they're but think. they're fancy. Uh huh. They're very fancy. All right. Like way fancier than the fifth edition, <laughs> at least visually. Okay. They look very pretty. They look very pretty. I don't know. Yeah. Um, if that translates to. <laughs> Good programming. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because yeah, dungeon worlds were very pretty too, but they couldn't do shit. It it is, it is. Oh, the Dungeon World sheets were kind of shit. Yep. For, for, in Roll20. Yep. <clears throat> uh, it is funny that they, even in Call of Cthulhu, they still use those ridiculous generated fantasy names. For the when you make a character, oh, roll twenty spits out some garbage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, o Oglasar Ugeku. I mean, seriously, it's like Don John is a thing. This is nineteen twenty. Yeah. Boston. This is, this is my, uh, this is my Kiki Vidriflu. <laughs> uh, I mean, <coughs> yeah, donjohn.bin.sh, right there, and under, under weird fiction, the first one is Cthulhu Mythos. Male names, George Nelson, Dewey Fuller, Dr. Herrick Carver. Like, hey, this is, that's much better. <laughs> or you have can... you have you played? <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say. Oh, and then they have unspeakables and mythos tomes and like Aztec male oh. names and <laughs> I'm like wow, okay. There's some cool ones in here. But what's your question? Uh, have you played Stardew Valley? <sighs> Man, I think so. No. Yes? No. I might have looked <laughs> okay. at it. I might have glanced at right. it. Well, yeah. Whenever you get a, like a chicken or a cow or a horse or something, mm -hmm. uh, the, they, they, they let you name it. Uh, and the generated names in that game are fucking crazy. <laughs> They're pretty good. I mean, they're they're pretty consistently pronounceable, mm -hmm. which is the most important thing, I think. Um, but they are wild. <laughs> um, uh, I'm opening I'm opening it on Switch just so I can read off some of them. But uh, uh, trying to copy the invite link <clears throat> to roll to roll twenty, so you can join. Mm -hmm. I put it in uh, Discord. Yep, I got it. <coughs> I'll give you Oglasar or Ogle Og Ogoslar <laughs> Ogoslar. 
one's here. One's here. All right. Um, oh wow, this laptop doesn't have my login at all. Hang on. So what are my what are my what are my chickens called? Shit. Four chickens. Uh, Fecardo. <laughs> Cackers. Pilbo. And Zordamus. Those are all generated. <laughs> wow. Names. That's. Wow. My cat is named. My cat is named Bernard, which is almost a name. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Zordomus, though, was impressed with. Although it is a weird name for a chicken. Unless you did and I missed it. Oh, there you are. Yep. Okay, here is Ogus. Oh, Ogoslar. It's a lovely green, green and gold. Was that on your end? No, I overheard it. Yeah. Was a thing. Wow. Man. Busy out there. Was that somebody's phone that I heard through my window? Oh, I had no idea. It was, must have been loud. Buy a chicken. Let's see. Oh, that building is full. Never mind. I'm looking at a chicken. Oh, damn. I was going to buy a chicken so that I could go through some randomly generated damn. Unspeakable name. Wow. What the fuck? It sounds like it's in this room. I'm taking my headphones off so I can hear that better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely not my side. Well, I can see that you're talking, but I can't hear you because of Okay, it must be some people waiting for something. All right, headphones are back on. Yeah, no, I was just saying it's definitely not on my side because I'm he I'm definitely hearing it all over the headphones. So. Yeah. It's definitely coming up through my window. No, I I don't have any edit permissions on this Oglasar Ugegu. Oh, I, I just put it in your journal, didn't I? Yeah. Oops. There you go. All right. Um, oh wow, that is pretty. So, you yeah. So you could try to uh, I don't know translate coordinate with well coordinate with. Sean about maybe making the characters. Although I'll put I'll put the character creation prompts in Discord. Um, is Sean 
kind of el elusive lately on, on on Discord. He is. I'm not. I'm not really sure what's going on. I had him. Yeah. I, I had him in DMs a couple days ago, but um, mm -hmm. he just responded to one of my goofy memes and sent a right. XKCD comic, and that was it. So I'm not really yeah. sure what he's doing, what he's up to. Yeah. But I mean, the last time we talked about this, he was definitely interested. So I know he has yeah. also gotten involved with that um, concordancy Discord server where they're like just constant jump in and join one offs with random mm. people and <laughs> buff your score inside okay. the server, which I thought is kind of a cool idea. But right. yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard of this. Yeah. Me being uh, not one to initiate things, they eventually just kicked me out because I wasn't participating enough. So oh. I'm like, eh, okay. That's a shame. Okay, I'm buying a chicken. Let me see. What's the name of your new animal? Is it Russie? Is it Tomo? Is it Schutze? Hmm. Sabu. Rumbus. Rumbus is pretty good. Uh, oh well, now they're getting pretty bad. Real dry spell on these randomly generated names. Bolina. Sus oh my god. See, sometimes they break the format. Because this one is sus sus. Hmm. It's capital S, lowercase us. Mm -hmm. Capital S, lowercase us. No spaces. They added a capital letter right in the middle. Hmm. I've never seen that before. So, like, the craziest thing about this, the Stardew Valley farm animal name generator is that it breaks its own rules like constantly nice but they're still they're still usually pronounceable so I don't know I'm impressed and baffled by yeah no you know what I guess it does I guess that is a that is a framework that it uses because I now I got fofo which is f-o-f-o -F -O with the capital <laughs> f in the middle so wow it does do that sometimes breaking it. Oh no. Stephen Delaney. Yep. A professor Dunkirk. Oh, it deleted those automatically. That's good. Oh, Dunkirk, Illinois. See, I went to oh. the other one. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah, he, he he grew up in the country with his weird yeah. hair. <laughs> yeah, with my hope being his weird aunt also had weird, like, creepy dolls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this 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 uh the backstory by the way works pretty well for the uh uh alone against the flames oh okay because mm -hmm. i think you can pick i think you can pick professor they don't get into your backstory much of course because mm -hmm. it's a choose your own adventure <laughs> right uh but uh yeah it works pretty well uh, it's actually quite similar to what i did because because you, you're living in the country moving to the city and professor is one of the. I think I also chose professor. Professor, mm -hmm. professor is one of the one of the options it gives you. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how much that influences the story. It might a bit. It, it maybe just a conversation or two. Right.
So, library use. I have no idea why he would <laughs> benefit in the skill of using a library. He personally yeah. knew Mr. Dewey. You know, if we wanted to, I, I don't. I wouldn't want to exclude Sean. I'd rather, right. I'd rather run. I'd rather run um, the haunting with with you and Sean. Mm -hmm. But there, there, there are some adventures that are meant for one player and one DM. Okay. Or GM, mm -hmm. keeper, whatever the what. Uh, <laughs> so that is also an option. All right. Um, yeah. For for just for learning. Although, I, I, I kind of want to start with the haunting anyway because. The haunting is like the, the, the like the starting adventure mm -hmm. for Call of Cthulhu. Right. Uh, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was. It not only is it has it been uh, included with almost every version of Call of Cthulhu as a starting adventure. Mm -hmm. I think it was the first adventure run for Call of Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. With, with like by the creators testing it out. Hmm. Okay. I heard that once from someone, and I, I, I can't verify it because that is it's hard. It's a hard thing to Google. Because it's so many people's first game, so that's what shows up when you first when you search, you know, the haunting first Call of Cthulhu, whatever, you know. I, I don't. I, I wouldn't really know how to go about verifying. Yeah. Verifying that. Those uh, Polish. Huh? His his landlady will be Polish. <laughs> oh right, right, right. right. Love ski. This character might also work for for um, the haunting, although mm -hmm. again should make uh, should probably make it in uh, coordination with um, Sean. Right. Right. Um, the prompt, which I'll put in Discord with some other info, um, is. You are going to be hired to investigate an old house in 1920s Boston. Rumor has it that it may be haunted. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Boston. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you should create a team of private detectives, amateur sleuths, journalists, or friends of the landlord who have volunteered for the test. So, a professor could be. Uh, a viable like, character for this if they were uh, either an amateur sleuth, as they say here, whatever that means, or uh, happen to be friends with the landlord. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, 
that's some of the reason why they might be considered for this job by a friend. Uh, yeah. But uh, two, like two private eye characters, would obviously be a very, really easy in, or um, two journalists that happen to know the landlord. Mm -hmm. Uh, private eye and a journalist who knew each other and one of you knows the landlord and, the, and asks the other one to come in as a favor you know right. uh, all, all that stuff I don't want to say much about my other another another game that I'm kind of working on, mm -hmm. although I'm not I'm not as close to ready because it's original and that's uh, daunting for me. Um, I haven't run I haven't run an original thing in a while since I ran a, uh, a campaign. It went, it went for a while. I think of it as kind of a failure in my mind, but it's not really. Like, it was fun and it went. It went for a, a decent amount of time, so I think that's I think that's that's good enough. There's no no problem there. Uh, uh, I mean, honestly, like most D and D games, peter out in some way. Right. They don't. I don't think they usually have a uh, a satisfying like conclusion. Mm -hmm. And when they do, oftentimes it's because the game was petering out anyway, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, well, let's get let's get to something satisfying. Go back to town, <laughs> shoot off a bunch of fireworks, everybody right. claps, and yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't read an original, uh, original like. One shot. I, I've run an original one shot. Mm -hmm. I haven't run an original campaign in a long time. Mm -hmm. Don't really have any plan to. Uh, but uh, I want to do more original one shots. I want to get good at writing one shots because that that seems like a really fun thing to to have to have like a collection of uh, one shots and scenarios and whatever that I can run right, right. with a group that. I haven't, you know, that I don't know very well. That it's, you know, uh, like a mobile, a mobile game that I can carry around with me and just drop at the, with, without much of this. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> even before I had played D and D at all, I basically took one of my semi self baked um, semi kind of predefined world building projects and translated it into a, an attempt at a one shot <laughs> I don't think it actually yeah. worked out very well at all but <clears throat> it had all the geographical elements which is kind of my thing when I'm inventing stuff to That's focus cool. on I just turned this Mango cream soda that I got from a Japanese restaurant. <laughs> I turned, I looked at the back, and it says in big letters at the top over the nutritional facts, zero percent juice, which is very funny to me that it what they didn't put that there in such big. Usually, that's where you put like a hundred percent juice or yeah. you know, no artificial whatever the fuck like <laughs> but it it puts in huge letters at the top zero percent juice weird <laughs> i'm sure that there's some people that would see that and be like oh thank goodness you know my, you know it won't the acidic juice won't upset my stomach or something but, but it just seems very strange right that is oh the there's milk there is, there is milk in this that's also weird i don't know why i think i don't know why i it does feel very weird, even though it's called creamy soda. Oh yeah, it's not cream soda; it's creamy soda. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. 
It's in it's in like an aluminum bottle. Hmm. <coughs> it's like an oxygen tank. Man. The exotics of non American things. Oh yeah, but I was gonna say I won't say much about this other project, but I am working on. I, I know I mentioned it briefly. A uh, um, Middle Earth set yes, one shot. Yes. Yes. Um, I've kind of settled on using Adventures in Middle Earth and basing it in Fifth Edition, although uh, I'm definitely gonna simplify it a lot because. This this system is not designed for one shots. Mm -hmm. Like half of the rule, half of the uh, every character class is like travel stuff and conversation stuff. It's very much meant to be a sandbox. Gotcha. You know, much more than five A D and D is. Like mm -hmm. it's built explicitly for a sandboxy kind of adventure, gotcha. which obviously is not is not what I'm planning on doing. Yep. Um, Sounds cool. So, yeah, I'm basically gonna have to overhaul the class abilities, which is not too bad because I was gonna do pre-made characters anyway. So it's not like I'm gonna have to talk. Like it's not like I'm gonna have to redesign full character class. I'll just design four or five characters. Right. Um, which is much easier because I don't have to design like different choices. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, all right. I think I'm pretty good at that. Like, like I, I, I've always enjoyed making pre pre generated characters, even though I've never run a game where I gave the players pre gen characters. Mm -hmm. I really got to start doing that because, uh, I don't know. Do people like playing with pre generated characters? I'm not sure. I, I would imagine that I would. I mean, it. I can see. Yeah, how, I feel like I would. I could see how it would definitely save time on the front end. Yeah. Not that I'm complaining, I, it, but there yeah, is sometimes like, it feels like something that people might be hesitant about. If it like right learning a new system, when I I always really enjoyed that and was kind of excited if someone brought a game system to me. Mm -hmm. and was like, hey, do you want to do you want to learn this a bit so that I can run it for you? Yeah, that was always very exciting to me. Sure. Uh, but at some point, I realized like most people have a, a sort of a negative reaction to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so interesting. Yeah, no, I I wouldn't be opposed to it at all, and I do see the benefit of yeah. it. I, I, yeah, I That's why. That's why you're here. Oh, you got a picture. I do. Yeah, I was just trying to poke Yay. around and see if I could. The little curl. <laughs> yeah, it's the closest one I could find when I looked what up nineteen twenties professor. Yeah. <laughs> Cute little nerd. All right. He is gonna die. <laughs> oh boy so sad oh wait I have also no I don't have five oh cards. yeah I guess I guess I guess yeah that, that is something I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna make clear to you and Sean you, you very very well might die like much more likely than you yeah think. and it yeah. might be it might be terrible like it, you might super <laughs> duper die <clears throat> but then you should also reiterate that's kind of the fun of this system. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <coughs> this is something you got to get everyone on board with first. Right. Now he now Sean might actually know actual Lovecraft mythos. I don't um, as much. But I'm wondering if there is like a significant focus on like afterlife and stuff. 
as in. Oh, yeah, uh, not in this adventure, but mm. maybe. Like, oh, that'll yeah. be that'll be fun though. That'll turn the, the tables because uh, because I was a little bit of a uh, pain in the ass in our uh, <laughs> uh, uh, at the beginning of um, uh, Tomb of Annihilation because I knew everything. Oh yeah. Not about the adventure, but about the system. Right, right. Uh, and and he, you maybe don't know this. Sean g- gave me a little talking to uh, uh, about like very, very politely mm-hmm. uh, was like y- 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 you know maybe stop correcting us with the rules, which he was totally right about. I'm really glad that he came because yeah. I was I was worried I was doing too much of that too. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't sure. Gotcha. You know, if I was doing too much or too little. Right, right. Yeah, um, no, no, no. I, I didn't, com- I didn't find it to be that bad, but right. it was helpful, and and I was needing more help. I think I was, I think I was, I think I was genuinely helpful more like later on, mm-hmm. because because I, you know, I I would wait for someone to ask me. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, Ooh, I love that little switch at the top. Whisper to keeper. Is that what you just found? Yes. I don't know what it does. Because uh, I tried typing I two think, things. I think it's when you roll like from the sheet. I think you, you got to do something on the sheet for it to change. Let me turn it off from edit mode then. So that was whispered. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Nice. Very cool. Versus eighty. What? Uh, oh right, eighty is your skill. Yeah. Okay. You succeeded both. Times. Oh yeah, the second one is extreme. This does seem. This is a very polished character sheet. I'm liking it. It's, it's thematic. It's versatile too. This wouldn't be too unfitting if you changed the time period. It, obviously, it looks. Like, it, it fits best in like a nineteen twenties. Oh yeah, setting. for sure. For sure. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be terrible if you ran. Uh, the dark ages. It wouldn't be like super distracting. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's weird. What is roll options? You changed it to an extreme difficulty, so... I did, and I don't understand where they're getting the numbers from when I do that. Um, well, let me see. Your intelligence is 40. Oh! Uh, so half of 40 is 20, and then half of 20, I guess, is... 10? But it's actually yeah. more like 20%, not 25%. Wait, why is it 8, though? Because that, that would be 10, not 8. That is... Correct though, that was a power roll or intelligence roll? Intelligence. It says intelligence. And that should intelligence be. Is four. It should be 10, not 8, unless something. Yeah, it should be 16 according well, to. Oh, I, can, I can hover over it and see. Maybe it's not quartered. Maybe it's divided by 5. It says divided by 5, so I guess that's, I guess that's what it is. Not. Yeah, divided by five, not quartered. Roll, roll something else with extreme difficulty. Okay, that does make yeah, sense. Yeah, 80 divided by five, all right. Uh, okay. Oddly enough, though, yeah. I meant four. Okay, that's... I thought it was divided by four, not divided by eight. Education is supposed to be 70. Intelligence is supposed to be 80. This is in a different order than the paper sheet. Dexterity. Ah. Appearance is 50. Entered them on autopilot. Yeah. I mean, it went dexterity, appearance, intelligence, whereas here it goes dexterity, appearance, education, intelligence. Right. And they put, like, power and luck up there. Or luck, I guess. Yeah. Luck wasn't up there. Paper sheet, right? It's like some table. Mm-hmm. Right. 
I guess. Oh yeah, because because you because it changes up. What does luck do? Okay. But that's weird. It didn't like decrement luck automatically versus these failures. What? I thought when you failed a luck roll, it went down. Oh, um, or is it I don't mind, maybe. Uh, are you thinking of the alternate rule that I mentioned, where you can spend luck to raise a failure to a success? Yes, possibly. Yes. I mean, I don't know that I don't know that you're wrong. I, I don't remember that rule, but I didn't really read luck that closely. Hmm. <coughs> Sanity. Uh. Sanity begins at a level equal to your PAL score. So a luck roll is often used to determine external. Okay. So not I'm gonna go in a. I'm gonna go in a minute. That's fine. Yeah, I figured you were. Yeah. So we didn't really. I, I I I thought I'd have more specifically to go over this time, but I didn't really. Uh. That's all right. Yeah, I'm to get hold of Sean too, because if this is supposed to be a two-player at least, then for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, again, I'm not. I'm not ready to run it. Um, I wanna actually go. Oh, yeah, you know, I've. I've <laughs> Oh. Hey, man. Hello. Hey. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to talk, that, 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 that's all right. Uh, I might talk to you, though. That's okay. Um,. I am not ready to run The Haunting, which is the adventure that I uh, wanted to start with. Um, but I, I, I want to kind of get ready. I'm going to start actually like going through the handouts and information and stuff, um, which it, it always takes me longer than I think it's going to. But um, uh, I thought you two could make characters, um, not right now, but... Uh, soon, like work together to make the characters. Uh, um, I'll give you the prompt. Um, I can, I can, we can schedule one where we're all together, uh, or you can just do a call with 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 Daniel. I don't know. I don't know which one you'd prefer. I always like the idea of of players working together on something without me. Hmm. Um, that always seems cool. That always seems like a, I don't know. I, I like giving players privacy. <laughs> uh, I think that's a good idea. I think me and Daniel could try and collaborate on characters. I think that yeah. would be um, fun. All right. Uh, but uh, let me give you the prompt, and I'll, I'll put it. I'll try to put it in text form later. But uh, um, and I'm sure you know um, Daniel can help you with the actual like rules and fundamentals of. The system. Yeah. How familiar are how familiar how, how familiar are you with Call of Cthulhu? Like at all? Have you played it? Have you? Do... Well, you know, I started going through that that Choose Your Own Adventure, and oh, yeah. then I um, I downloaded the the character sheet PDF. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't print it. Um, I don't actually have my printer set up, and I can't figure out how to actually edit the the PDF document. I've got my, so I've got my that's, picture in a box. Right that's where I, where I paused. Yeah. So well, it's fine. Good news. Uh, it's not it, it's not essential. I think it's a fun way to learn, but it's yeah. Uh, yeah, the paper version is definitely fun. I've learned. Um, but good news, the Roll Twenty version is looking to be. Extremely, cool. it's it's real pretty. Uh, I I sent the link to join the world one. Okay. Cool. Um, where is the prompt? Let me. I'm trying to find the start of the venture. 
yeah, be careful if you're reading the, uh, there's the free 7th edition quick start rules, which is a great thing to reference when you're learning a game. Um, careful, though, because at, <laughs> at the back of that book is the entire adventure that I'm going to run, so. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Don't don't read beyond this point. <laughs> yeah, page uh, page eighteen. There's right before it. There's a big picture of a scary monster. Okay. Run away from the scary monster. Don't go any further. <laughs> it's, oh, there to, uh, it's there to guard the adventure, I guess. <laughs> um. Yes. Okay. So you are going to be hired to investigate an old house in 1920s Boston. Rumor has it that it may be haunted. Uh, you should create a team of private, you know, two, a team of two, uh, private detectives, amateur sleuths, uh, journalists, or friends of the landlord who have volunteered for the task. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, um, backstories are pretty important to the system. Not doesn't have to be elaborate at all. Um, the quick start rules give you like a nice little outline of like what kind of stuff might be important. Just like one or two important characters, where where you worked, where you grew up, uh, you don't need to really write anything, but some bullet points would be would be good. Um, but the the main thing, you know, 1920s America, you're in Boston, whether you live there, or grew up there, or maybe you're just there, passing through. But you, you should either have a job that would make sense for being. Uh, hired to investigate this house or be friends with the landlord. Um, I mean, you should still be the, at least the kind of person that might be interested in, in this, but um, uh, or have a job that makes sense. But, but you know, you don't have to be a paranormal investigator necessarily. Um, <laughs> but you know, um, yeah. it's nice that they have the landlord there as an easy out for like, you know, if you want to right. play a professor or a war veteran or something mm -hmm. uh, there's still an in like maybe you're friends with one of you could be friends with the landlord and the other one is brought in by the other player character as a favor you know what about uh, like one of those one of those uh, archaeologists from like the mummy or something yes yes <laughs> uh, they I mean this system very much allows for that cool uh, <coughs> I might have to rethink my character then, if you want to be the archaeologist. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm, throwing there, out there, ideas. There's no. Um, this isn't a you know a class based game. There's there's nothing. No problem with having the same occupation. Uh, in fact, uh, it would make sense. If you know each other and you're being hired for the same job. I'll specialize <laughs> in raptors, and you can specialize in <laughs> triceratops poop <laughs> or something. No, we don't have to play Jurassic Park. Uh, so I'll, I'll put the, again, I'll put the prompt in text form. But yeah, 1920s Boston, hired to investigate an old house. Um, not an ancient ruin or anything, but an old house. Rumor has it that it may be haunted. Oh, cool. But there no, is history. I, I believe there is, is history for the house. As I click around the uh, the roll twenty here, I'm not actually seeing any. Oh, I didn't give you a sheet. Uh, oh, okay. Well, because you weren't, because you didn't exist yet <laughs> to give a sheet to. So let me let me do that. I'll give you. They still use the same wild, uh, automatic generated like fantasy names for this system. So like. Oh yeah, you can, right. You right. can go ahead and make a. Uh, Make a um, professor of archaeology named Skiaskiki Fidriflu. Ah, I think I'll go with that name. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's foreign. He's from France. As long yeah. as you can say it. Oh, uh, I don't think I can say it. Uh, <laughs> cool. Oh, oh this is. Pretty. It's very pretty. There's like a little whisper to the to the keeper. That's me. Uh, switch at the top, which is is probably pretty useful in this game, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I mean, this game is much, you're much more likely to be separated in this game. Oh, yeah, and of course, standard disclaimer, you very well might die. It might be terrible. <laughs> it might be extremely unsatisfying. Uh, it's, it's just much more likely in this kind of system. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, Boston Haunted House. All right. Ooh. I'm gonna step away now. All right. Uh, thanks for popping in. Yeah, thank um, you. This was this was productive. See, I don't know. I don't know when I'll be when I'll actually be ready. No promises on that. But. Okay. Bye. Take care. Have a good evening. See ya. Whatever time it is. Uh, for him, I think it would be ten p.m. PM or AM? Oh wait, 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 wait. He he's in England now, isn't he? Yup. <laughs> ah, then he's. Uh, it's more like eight AM or something. <clears throat> no, he's 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 like. I'm at negative minus. Six. He's at. He's zero. minus one. Right. He's minus one. You're minus six. I'm minus four. So he's okay. like three hours ahead of me. So it's like. One o'clock. Two a.m. <laughs> yeah. One a.m. Um, Something's crazy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I I used to have to do the translation all the time with uh, with Simon because he is plus. Oh yeah. Plus one. <clears throat> yep. Well, I'm minus four, so he was five hours ahead. Yeah. England, I think, is one time zone behind Belgium. I, I thought. England was exactly Greenwich, yeah. which would be zero, because Greenwich sounds Greenwich, like, Greenwich sounds very English. It sounds like a pretty very sure Greenwich is not actually in yeah, hmm. Greenwich. Where is? It's the fact that it has a silent W. It that is makes me think it's a British name. Okay, so interesting. It is. It is in London. Okay, oh. well, England. So, yeah. Right. So he would be zero. Okay. Yeah. I guess. Anyway, how are you doing? Doing all right. Good. I had a saga today regarding my old phone. <laughs> oh. Which, really? Yeah, well, my old phone about a week ago broke. Like, as I was driving home in the middle of a blizzard, it just decided to turn off and never turn back on. Oh, no! <laughs> I could get it to pop up with the logo and everything, but after about 10 seconds, it would shut itself off and then reboot, shut itself off and reboot, shut itself off and reboot, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I can't do this so I ordered a new phone it is a nice new phone I'm really really excited but I'm like oh, all that old stuff on my phone it's not anything that I would be heartbroken to lose because I do clean it off periodically but <laughs> like there was enough on there that I'd love to just get in there and get it Additionally, I would love to have the phone fixed so that, hey, if this new one breaks at any point, at least I'll have a backup immediately. Right. So, yeah. finally today, the battery arrived, and I was sitting at work, like, heat gunning the back of the case <laughs> so that I could peel the sealed case open and get to the battery. Replaced the battery. It did not fix it. Oh, and I was Aww. sitting in the office fiddling around with it when at about four o'clock it suddenly just turned on not by itself but with all of my pushing buttons and stuff it finally booted all the way up I got through my pin number everything unlocked and I'm like quick while I'm here and I grabbed my little micro USB flash drive crammed it in there and started copying everything off. Well, it made it about 1% of the 
and it was all the way through the Android data uh, folder, which has absolutely nothing of value because it's just app data. Right. I stuck it on the wireless charger because it was draining the battery pretty fast and manually turned off the screen to also save battery and it kept copying for about 20 seconds and then it just went dark. <laughs> I'm like, no, but it was it was working. This is the... Oh, no. So, I have my theories, but it kind of ruined my mood for the rest of the work day. <laughs> and I kept wanting, like, what could it be this? Could it be that? And I'm like, no, you need to go home. Ian is expecting <laughs> you to play Call of Cthulhu tonight. <laughs> and you promised uh. that you'd be home by six. So, uh -huh. yeah. so I'm like, no, you're in a bad mood. And when you're in a bad mood, you tend to break things. <laughs> So do not touch that phone. <laughs> so I did not. <laughs> uh -huh. but, yeah, it was it was annoying. And I was sad. Anyway, how are you? Good. Um let's see. Um looking for a apartment that is uh slightly closer to work. Ah. Um and or does not have like um bugs. Yeah. Do you have, still have bed bug problems or something? Uh or was that uh, in your upon old a, place? No, that that's that was this place. Yeah, once upon a time there was there was bed but um they've huh. been exterminated. Okay. Yeah. These are roaches, unfortunately. <sighs> And I like, like, fog the whole place like multiple times, mm -hmm. um, and like the landlord has had multiple visits from the exterminator come by. Um, yeah. It's like impossible to get rid of without like tenting the whole place. Uh, and, and plus, there's a restaurant downstairs. So right, and your landlord's <laughs> not about to tent the place. But, yeah, so, so... Dang. I'm looking for a, a different um, place, even if it's no bigger than this place. Well, what happened to your idea of buying a place? Oh, yeah. Um, I took a look at my credit score, and I probably got a... Um, I could make a down payment. Mm -hmm. I could... You know, um, but credit score wise and mortgage wise, it makes more sense to finish paying off my student loan first. Gotcha. While renting a place, mm -hmm. and then look towards. Uh, yeah. How much do you have left of your student loans? Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure off the top of my head. Percentage though, like. Are you thinking you're down to 25% or something? Maybe? Oh, 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 um... I... guess so, mm -hmm. yeah. So? Yeah, because I know you, like, you did a ton of... You did a ton of, like, <laughs> major changes and things like that. Yeah, things like, yeah, no! there was... So, You've got more yeah. than the average yeah. college student would. I, I don't I don't know why. You spend you go to three or four colleges and it just like racks up and mm -hmm. weird how that happens. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. My uh, my girlfriend is looking to uh, to move in. Um, she got two kitties. Ooh, so fun. Yeah. Yay. Little um, little short legged um, like ginger cat that looks like a little caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another excuse to have a good 
bug free place. Like, like if you have to live with somebody, you don't want yeah. to have them complaining about it either. I mean, you could live no. with it, but yeah, makes sense. Oh my gosh. Call of Cthulhu Baby Onesie. <laughs> I'm looking at their merch store. I'm like, what in the world? Did did you get me the baby Cthulhu uh -huh. the baby pocket Cthulhu shirt? I did. I, uh, I still have it. Thing. That's awesome. Oh, I Maybe love you should it. just like Put on your um, put on your um, your steampunk outfit, the one with the top hat and the vest. Except wear that T-shirt underneath the vest, and then get yourself a new um, <laughs> profile picture. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I should stop poking around their website because <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Yeah, basically he was, we were, uh, whenever that was, last Thursday was it or something? Or maybe it was last Saturday. I think it was Saturday or Sunday. Um, we were just going through this quick start guide from the top down and he was going everywhere. I was going from top down. <clears throat> It seemed, I mean, just just chapter one. It seemed pretty straightforward as far as character generation went. But they also got in the 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 roll twenty version of the character sheet also gets into stuff that this guy doesn't really even touch on. Okay. Which is like starting money and um, <clears throat> what do you have as far as weapons and things like that mm. so yeah it's it seems a little more in depth than I was expecting but it also got me fairly inspired just going through the quick start and, yeah. filling, and filling out the character sheet it was like oh okay so if I stay in theme and then he gets into this okay it's a haunted house in Boston okay, let me think about that. And so I kind of came up with a backstory-ish for my guy. What, uh, what's your character? <clears throat> he, well... Idea. Well, my character idea, which is... He said, maybe you should get together with Sean and come up with a two-character a two thing. Like, oh, okay, so that means I might redo my redo mine for now and just keep this one in reserve. But this one was like, he's a, a college professor in archaeology and anthropology. Um, he works at the University of Chicago in the anthropology department as an archaeologist. Uh... <clears throat> uh Significant people. Barbara, the head librarian at the university library. She's pretty cute. There's also Aarav, the Indian baker, where he stops every morning on the way to work. He usually likes to walk, although he can drive if he needs to. And then Mrs. Jalovsky, his landlady. <laughs> um, ideologies and beliefs. He was raised a Methodist, but has since become agnostic and skeptical of religious institutions. That was the paper form. I kind of also thought, eh, he could have some weird paranormal uh, eh, eh, paranormal paranoia. That works. Um, treasured possessions. His father's Rolex, the heirloom viola, its fifth generation. A photo of his great aunt whose ma mansion he visited annually as a boy. His cat, Theodore. <laughs> um, 
traits. He's over six feet tall. He's hypersensitive in hearing, and he's moderately attractive, but really nondescript. Injuries and scars. He is bespectacle and has a double jointed left thumb. And I'm thinking, yeah, his thumb it might have been an injury from a brawl or something like that at some point. He has a fear of clowns and creepy dolls, as well as hospitals and sterile medical procedures. <laughs> Pretty typical, what you'd expect, honestly. Encounters mm -hmm. with strange entities. He could have sworn that as a child he heard noises in his aunt's house when the lights were out and he knew nobody was awake and moving. He had thought about demons and ghosts that were wandering about. So, yeah. Kind of a that was my that was my starter backstory for him for Stephen Delaney. <coughs> Born in Dunkirk and raised or and is now living in Chicago. Dunkirk, Illinois. <laughs> and Ian was like, "Oh, Illinois. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the other one." So, <laughs> anyway um, but then as I was retyping it in Roll20 I got a little bit more inspired and decided that instead of grow, instead of visiting his aunt's house every summer he actually outright lived with her because a notable uh a, note, a meaningful location is the gravesite of his departed father. So I figure he grew up kind of an orphan and was taken in by his elderly aunt who also had a mansion who very stereotypically was a recluse but also very high class and stuff like that. So, yeah. It's kind of where my idea is going at the moment. Mm -hmm. It might be spoon feeding the GM in this case. I'm uh, I'm looking at these uh, these sample occupations that they have in the PDF here. Yeah. Uh, is there any explanation of like what exactly like first aid or? library use is it is if you have the uh, if you have the character sheet open there's an, oh, yeah. there's me... there's an entire section called investigator skills okay and you basically check those off okay and then Next. Yeah. and then after you pick your occupation they say in this quick start guide take these um, 70, 60, 60, 50, 50, 50, 40, 40, 40 table and assign those values to these, to all of the skills that you just checked off for these occupation samples. Right, okay. So that's why I picked professor and then I checked off library use, other language, own language, psychology, and any other four. Which mm -hmm. I also picks drive auto. Uh, science, history, and archaeology. So and then I just yeah. One, two, three, All four, right. five, well, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm gonna go sometime maybe tomorrow kind of fill out my character sheet mm -hmm. guess okay. yeah. then I guess we'll collaborate some more on our characters here yeah let me know if you want to do another call I can yeah I can yeah, sure. I can make the time obviously not cool. during a weekday but <clears throat> any other time yeah I'm pretty much free Oh, come on, chat with me during work. Oh, I will, but I can't do so verbally without my <laughs> boss being like, What? 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 
Yeah. Are you talking yeah. to me? <laughs> I'm like, no, Vlad, I'm yeah. not talking to you. <laughs> I mean, he does that when I'm on the phone with my own mom. <laughs> I'd start talking, hey, how's it going? And he's like, what? <laughs> Just turn oh. your little ass around and go back oh, to work. Vlad. I <laughs> know, he drives me nuts sometimes. But I've tried to give him a little more grace as far as that goes. Just because I'm like, he called me out a couple times re recently and he was like, are you just getting angry again? Because you like to get angry, it seems. I'm like, and then it made me think, I'm like, do I though? I guess I do like to get angry. I guess half of these blow ups that I have are my own fault because I just blow up so I have been trying to kind of tone it down a little bit yeah anyway yeah not a problem anytime I'm up for it okay Ooh, I like it I'm gonna pin that too Oh, cool pins. I know, I keep hey, forgetting. What? Yeah, yeah. Um, that other channel, the TFC, does a lot of pinned... Um, I can imagine. Most of, yeah. the, most of the ones where server admins, the guild admins, are like extremely into it, and they have a bigger community that they actually have to manage. <laughs> Whereas, I only really let in people that I know and trust personally. Yeah, um, yeah. It it makes sense when you're forced to actually moderate a crowd of people. Then you use mm -hmm. all of the things. So, yeah. For here, it's not really necessary, but I like the features anyway. Mm -hmm. I was gonna ask you about something. Um, then we have to go about them. Oh, yeah. What's that wire cage thing that you posted in the, the Neo Tokyo Bot spam? What? Wire cage? February oh. 5th. Why did I post it there? Oh, that's our, uh, that's our load cage at work. It, it's basically oh. a bank of resistors. Uh, yeah, it's a bank of high power resistors. They're about 350 watts a piece. But they're so high a value, like, um, like 30 kilo ohms or something like that, that the entire cage can handle up to 30,000 volts from top to bottom. Okay. And the idea is we can hook up our 30,000 volt power supply and run this thing at high power, like 4,500 watts. So, yeah. I, and I don't... Uh, okay. I, I have no idea. And it also has a diode uh, back feed thing. Basically, the pieces of fiberglass in the middle are diode banks, which um, which do some sort of, like, um, reverse current prevention. So it simulates the uh, high voltage tube, a vacuum tube, which is what we oh, actually no. power up. This is what we sell these for, is powering up vacuum tubes, which are hmm. still in use, believe it or not. They have not been wow. outdone by transistors because they're super duper really? high. They're high, high, high efficiency. Extremely high efficiency and military people still love them. So, yeah. Huh. Fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's what that is. I actually don't know why I posted it in here. Maybe it was my best, <laughs> um, my best option for a, a just, I need to share this photo so that I can download it on my computer. Let me quick take a photograph of it, and uh, I don't know where to send it. Let me just send it to Discord. 
Cause... Yeah, that's that's what I do sometimes. I'll like mail a email a, a link to myself that I want to remember mm. so I can right. get somewhere. Right, but it doesn't make sense why I posted it to Discord when I could have just emailed it to myself. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm a little confused too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's what that is. Hey. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <sighs> All right, I'm going to probably get going too. It's Yeah. Not as late as it needs to be so that I can feed Diego and go to bed myself, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of feeling it. Yeah. All right, talk to All you right. sometime. Yeah, good to hear from you. You too.